Good afternoon, everyone. This year marks the 500th anniversary of the Philippine part in the first circumnavigation of the world from March 16 to October 28, 2021. It is also the commemoration of the victory at Mactan, which happened 500 years ago on April 27. To support this centennial, we are featuring the making of the biggest diorama on the Battle of Mactan. Today is our second talk which delves into the conceptualization and the execution of the diorama design. This live stream is made possible by National Historical Commission of the Philippines through its National Quincentennial Committee, Sulu Garden Foundation Incorporated at Miagao, Iloilo, Iloilo Museum of Contemporary Art at Manduriao, Iloilo, Chinatown Museum at Binondo, Manila, and Vibal Group. Thank you for joining us as we get to appreciate the research, creativity, and effort of the Sulu Garden Foundation team for this grand and creative project of the biggest diorama on the Battle of Mactan. I am Janine, and I will be your host for today. Last week, we listened to how Dr. Danilo Herona, the director of Magellan Studies Center, gave us his very long, it was like a decade long research from libraries in Spain, Portugal, and Italy, and how he was able to come up with a book called Ferdinand Magellan, The Armada de Maluco, and the European Discovery of the Philippines. This also served as the groundwork for which the diorama was created. I know that everyone has a lot of questions, but to cover all of the topics about the making of the diorama, we will be having speakers who will be discussing the vision, the conceptualization, execution strategy, how to create the characters, and of course, the details of miniature art. To start off, we would like to ask first a poll question. In your Facebook Live page, you will be seeing a question there and you will also be seeing the answers. If you are an educator, a teacher who is listening to this talk in Vibal Group or also in the museum page, um, please answer A. If you are a history enthusiast, if, if that's your thing, you could answer B. If you're a student, a C. And if you have been following the pages of both Ilomoka and at the same time, Chinatown Museum, please answer D. This will help us gather data so that we could create more content that will be interesting for for each one of you. To start off, we will be showing these speakers. Um, we have one Miguel Trevino. He is the 3D design team manager. Jacob Lorella, he is the manager for 3D printing. And Emilio Sanchez, the miniature art team manager. But to start our talk, we will call on Arlie John Nim, the manager of project planning. All right, so let's call on Arlie John Nim to join us in our talk. Hello, Janine, how, how am I doing? How's the signal now? It's good, we can hear it's you. Good. Good afternoon. You are currently now in Miagao, Iloilo, at Sulu Garden Foundation, right? Good Welcome, afternoon. Welcome, sir. Yes, good afternoon, Chinatown Museum. Uh, people from Sulu Garden, the Iloilo Museum of Contemporary Arts, Vibal Group. And we'd like to thank also the National Centennial Committee for making this happen. Uh, we welcome you to the pre-launching a week before the launching of the Battle of Mactan miniatures or diorama. Magandang hapon, Janine. 
to start off, sir, we would like to ask first, what is Sulu Garden Foundation? Sulu Garden Foundation is the social arm of Sulu Garden Restaurant. Before the foundation was born, uh, Sulu Garden Restaurant is already doing some social works. In fact, the foundation is an offshoot of pressures from interest groups to really institutionalize their uh, social activities. No? So um, the foundation was born after the activities. And one of the concentrations of Sulu Garden is for us to take pride in everything we do. By pride, we mean that we have to preserve. Mm -hmm. Letter P stands for preservation of heritage. Second, research for continuous learning. And I is involving the public in all the activities. Uh, D would stand for demonstrating perseverance. We prove this, especially during okay. the pandemic. We have to persevere in whatever we do. And uh, E would stand for espousing values-based community life. So uh, this is the um, battle cry of um, mm -hmm. Sulu Garden Foundation with the mission uh, that we have declared that we have to lead in whatever we do. By lead, we mean learn and convey whatever we have learned. And E for the enrichment of the experiences of everyone. A would stand for advocating responsible communitarian life and D for developing strategies for the improvement of the quality of life of the community. So this diorama would form part of the bigger mission of Sulu Garden Foundation. Am I getting so, through, uh, Janine? Yes, yes. Yes, understood, sir. So here we have a photo of the team. Yes. I understand that this is just the core team, right? This is just almost almost half of the real uh, people involved in mm -hmm. the diorama. Um, the first, when you say probably the pioneers, but as we went along, uh, we got more people. Oh, that's probably good. we are into something like Getting 27 or 30 bigger. now. Wow, 27 okay. or 30 directly involved. To move along, sir, I think this will be your biggest project ever with um, the the biggest diorama, right? So mm -hmm. we've seen already the video. We will move along with the vision. Could mm -hmm. you run us through the vision of the project? Who envisioned this? Okay. Uh, this, this project was actually envisioned way back in 2016. Dr. Herona Again. happened to pass by Sulu Garden and had mm -hmm. dinner. Uh, he met our chairman, uh, Dr. Uh, Jonathan Matias. They talked about it. At that time, the book of Dr. Hirona, The Armada de Malaco, and uh, The Discovery of the Philippines has just been launched. Mm -hmm. And he, Dr. Matias, our chairman, is also very uh, interested in small things, in diorama. This is the third diorama that the Sulu Garden Foundation actually uh, was able to make. But this is the biggest one. Uh, yes. The two others were about local history, the two local histories, uh, uh, historical events of Miyagawa Iloilo. But mm -hmm. now, uh, Dr. Matias said, this, will, this comes once every 500 years. In the next 500 years, we are no longer here. So okay. we might as well make it the biggest ever that we can, um, budget-wise, talent-wise. Uh, somebody asked, eh, bakit gagawin natin eh, taga Miyagawa? Tayo, and we are not even Cebuanos. But mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Matias is, is very firm in, in, in saying, look, the restaurant's name is Sulu Garden. This part of Western Visayas belongs to Sulu Sea, so we share the same culture and traditions. And we That's should true. take pride as Visayans, particularly, and in general as Filipinos. This is ours. This is the 500th year uh, celebration of... Uh, shall we say, discovery of the Philippines, the, the birth of Christianity in the only, they say the only Christian country in mm -hmm. Southeast Asia. And of course, we have contributed. This is one of the last uh, a few, a few stations before the circumnavigation of the world. And this is where, uh, in, in, in this place, where uh, one of the great navigators, Fernando Magalhães, mm -hmm. died. So uh, that's, that's the... the Kumbaga, the hugot of uh, the diorama. Yes, so, it is indeed very significant, ano? 
just to share with us, how did you start laying out the entire groundwork, yung physical na actual planning already? The physical, um, the meetings, because at the onset, it was only uh, me and uh, Dr. Uh, Matias uh, who's talking mm -hmm. about this, but uh, we really said we need, we need a group of people. And uh, of course, he has extensive friends. Uh, for one, we were very lucky. Inaanak mm -hmm. niya si Emilio, who is um, uh, a Spanish uh, retired uh, Air Force, and he lives here in the Philippines. And then we talked to him, can you, can you guide us? Because he's also a hobbyist and miniature painter. So mm -hmm. he was the first one contacted. Uh, engineer Fusin, uh, engineer architect Fusin, who's doing architectural works for, for Sulu Garden, was also tapped uh, for the actual construction of uh, the geographical features and so on and so forth. There were um, a group of young artists in our community uh, because it's pandemic, they had this problem of how can we finance if ever uh, yes. the Department of Education would would really pursue this uh, uh, no no face-to-face -face, uh, education. Mm -hmm. So they had this uh, initial challenge of we cannot even buy for our cell phones. So we tested them. Emilio tested them on their uh, fine motors as far as miniature paintings is concerned. And of course, we wanted to have Hugot. They have that intrinsic motivation to really join. So these young artists now, numbering about seven initially, and then mm -hmm. we went on to something like about 15, uh, joined us in the miniature paintings. Emilio had them trained on miniature paintings. And then um, Jacob, who's uh, very keen also in 3D printing, was taken yes. in. Uh, Juan Miguel, who is uh, well-known already, an international 3D designer, came in. So we all have this uh, team uh, who started the, the actual production. Uh, way and, back, I think, yeah. July or August. July or okay. August uh, last year. We, so production started and it went on until we're about 95% finished now. Wow. So it's almost just in time for the March 27 launching, is it? We're setting up next week. Yes. Already, we we tested setting up uh, a few weeks ago for the National Historical Commission uh, uh, group who came here, and they were happy about the initial setup. But that was only around eighty-seven percent achievement. But now we are into ninety-five percent because we're on we're That's already great. into fine tuning, uh, uh, repainting very small details. Na lang. Okay, we have here a photo with um. NHCP head, Dr. Jen Escalante, right? Yes. We, again, I yeah. have a question though. Has it always been up to a specific size? When did you decide to grow 50 square meters? Actually, it started at 40. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we decided it will be 40. But uh, Architect Fusin said, we cannot depict the geography at 40. And he said the he said actually the scale at one is to fifty. At one is to fifty, there's a three centimeter centimeter tall uh, miniature uh, warriors. Yeah. But what about the flora, the fauna, the environment? We have to show them because it's not our our purpose. It is not just on the battle. We would also like to share information which our present uh, generation may not be able to appreciate if they haven't seen it even in miniatures. Like we, we put in some human interest uh, uh, features in the diorama, you know, classing mm -hmm. houses, and what were the houses made of? How were they designed? Yes. Uh, what were, the, what were the, the, the plants? And what were the, the flora and fauna generally? So we featured, uh, because it's also endemic in the Philippines, the fire tree. The Roma, yes. you might not be familiar with Roma, but these are the bushes that grows and it's uh, being killed uh, in recent times. But uh, in some remote uh, places in the Philippines, it still mm -hmm. grows in the shorelines. This is where the Magellan warriors get to hide when they ambush Magellan's uh, soldiers at that time. We'll feature that. Pigafetta wrote about uh, 
a day or a night where they were treated to a feast of uh, fruit bats. We will feature also a tree full of fruit bats. That's nice. There are, there are different yeah. human interest things to, to show in this diorama. Mm -hmm. uh, we learned that we didn't have our own endemic cows because cows were in, imported from Mexico in the late 1700s. But we have our own caraba. We have our own water buffaloes. We, we will feature that. And one of the biggest learning is, my God, we have our own uh, native breed of dog, yes. which, is, which has a genetic line of about 30,000 years old. When we researched that, we said it's amazing. So people should know this. Uh, we appreciate the uh, foreign... We will be dogs. sharing a video and photos on me, that, what you were yes. mentioning a while ago. Yes. We, we have, we made a miniature of that. And we had several, I think, eight native uh, breed of chicken. We will show three, which is endemic in the Visayas. So you can, can you imagine yeah. a three and, and a chicken. Yeah. So, so many more, so many more. Uh, the the bakau or what they call the, the, these trees that grows on the, on the shorelines, which protects the, the islands from the waves, which is very, very, um, uh, a major feature of, uh, the battlefield at that time. That's why the ships of Magellan cannot come ashore because mm -hmm. of, of these uh, overgrowth and of course the coral reefs. So all of this were considered, we ended up with 50 square meters. Eventually the, the whole dining hall of Sulu Garden has to be sacrificed for this diorama. Okay, can't wait to see it. So <laughs> later on when we move through the talk of both the creating the characters at the same time miniature art, we will also be showing photos of what you're talking about so that the, our viewers would have an idea what it is. Right now, we could see the, this is the Gantt chart. You were oh, yeah. working on this since May 2020, it's May. but you mentioned a while ago, conceptual wise, this was 2017, right? Yes, 2016, 2017, thereabouts, when Dr. Hirona came here. I think the book was launched about uh, two months pa lang when he came here to have dinner. And mm -hmm. uh, they talked about it with uh, Dr. Matias. Thank you. Thank you for giving us a very good briefer on this. We will show everyone, Sir Arlie, the run through yes. since um, last year so that they have an idea how the entire diorama progressed. Please watch this. very quick but yeah. imagine that it was done it really took painstaking effort at the same time you really had to hire a lot of people to also join the team right yeah let me talk about this no yes. some of the figures yeah even let me talk about this no some figures has to be repeated three times until we are satisfied with with the facial features, with mm -hmm. with uh, how the tattoos were designed, how the how the you know the bahag was was made, because this has gone through extensive research also. So many of the figures has to be repeated several times before we are satisfied. Mm -mm. But I also believe in that because you have to be meticulous, eh? um, mm -hmm. especially since we are going back to history. And if you're trying to recreate something, might as well do it properly and do it right. It has to go through a magnifying glass validation. If it cannot be validated in the magnifying mm -hmm. glass, repeat it. That's that's our standard. It has to go through a magnifying glass. We will look through the next phase of our talk is looking at the characters. 
Thank you, Sir Arlie. We will see you again yeah. later on. Sure, sure, sure. Now let's go to Juan Miguel Trevino. He is our master 3D artist. He is the one who has extensive experience in character modeling. So, hi, Juan, can you hear me? Hello, hi, yes. Great. So we're here now at um, looking at the next photo, which is on... This is for, um, could, you could you describe what you were doing here? Uh, for this one, it wa I was modeling the Lanao Victoria. So I think the real challenge was there was no blueprint of the mm. uh, Lanao itself. So I had to look, uh, I asked help from William, the architect, and he helped me a lot with uh, research on this. So we found a, a video of the replica of the Lanao Victoria. And that's where I based this design on. So, yes. And on the right, you can see the characters that I modeled. And uh, it was hard as well because uh, we were basing everything on paintings. On There were no photos back then. So yeah. everything was uh, guesswork. And uh, so, yeah, mostly based on paintings and stuff. I'll, I'll go back to your um, render for Victoria. The next photo is how it actually came out. Is this it? Yes, yes. That's the one, yes. Painted how long did it painted. take you? How long did it take uh, you to design it? It took me around two to three weeks to design it because I had to put, uh, like, on the hull itself, uh, I placed one, how do you call this, the details, you know, the wooden planks on the sides. Mm -hmm. You can actually see them uh, when you look closer into the printed one. So one by one, we, uh, Ian and I, the one who assisted me in doing this, we put all the wooden planks on the side. Everything needs to be perfectly detailed from the interiors, from all the floors inside. We modeled everything. So, yes. But the ropes, they are mini. Like, the, ropes were, the, the ropes were made by Emilio's team because uh, we... I, we were thinking of printing them at first, but they're too small. Mm -hmm. yeah. they're, al they're already too small to print. So it's bet. Uh, plus, it would look much, re much, much more realistic if we actually used the real, real threads and stuff. Yeah. That's very, very intricate. Let's go back to um, the. So we will share with everyone this video. very intrigued by the way you created Lapu-Lapu because usually Lapu-Lapu is in action or at least he's standing. Yes, yes. But this one is very, very unique in that he's sitting down. He's overlooking the entire field, right? But yes. whose concept was this? Yes, yes. Sitting on top of a hill. So uh, Jonathan and I talked about it because uh, at that time he was already 70 years old. So he's, uh, I reckon he's still strong, but he won't be able to join the fights anymore because he's a bit old, you know, 70 years old. But uh, so we decided, oh, why don't we 
put him on top of a hill like a real like the real king that he is Mm-mm. and just watching over the battle with his wives and other guards around him and just sitting there holding his sword and looking intently uh, at the battlefield so yeah that's what Jonathan and I talked about and that's what we agreed on and yeah so this is how this idea was born Yes, very, very interesting. At saka very unique kasi compared to the others. Eh. Um, mm. I saw this yes. one part of the video that was where someone was creating a figure. So if it's a 1 is to 50 ratio, my question is, how long does it usually take for it to be finished? Which one? The modeling of the characters, was it? The modeling of the characters, yeah. Uh, so yeah, so basically, I think the issue we had before was uh, we started it uh, July. I was actually modeling June. So I started modeling everything June already, the Karapawas, the Lanao, and the characters. Because uh, Jonathan wanted, the chairman wanted it to be us, not really too realistic because it's going to be three centimeters small, but still realistic in a way that you can see see the eyes, nose, the mouth, and the mm. muscles around the body. Yeah. So the, I think the real challenge was, at first I was doing it alone, creating 2,500 characters, and I have to finish it before December. So plus uh, the time I, I needed to do a bit more research and stuff, especially mm-hmm. with what they were wearing. So at that time, at first we started, we, we could mo- I could model around 1 to 10 characters every two weeks okay. since uh, I think that That's- was June, July. And then as we move forward, uh, and I was already doing 40 characters a week, 40 characters that uh, straight, that go straight to the printing. So, yeah, because yeah. uh, I have to also, we have to take note that I have to change all the movements of Definitely. each character. Each character has a different expression. Some are shouting, some are, you know, gritty, some are dying. <laughs> so, yeah. So, is it safe to say that there is never a similar character? Every character is is unique on its own. Yes, it could be like an inch, uh, an inch of difference, but it is noticeable. Okay, that's yeah. Parang terracotta warriors, no? Yes, yes, yes. Each of them are very. So, uh, yes, that's how meticulous this project is actually. So even the details of the clothes, it needs to look like uh, you know real clo- real clothing, mm-hmm. on three D print. So yeah. that was the. Real so chat, but over time we got used to it and we started modeling. All right. So once you are done with the designing, what happens is it goes to printing. Yes, uh, I talked to Jacob. I have forty characters here ready for printing, and he prints them out. And uh, we check them. We check. We check if there's problems with the three D model or the three D print mm-hmm. thing. And we reprint again some of it. So yeah, it's a it's actually a a long process, but because sometimes we get errors as well. But but yeah, it's a good thing we've been doing this for quite some time. Because I told Jacob, let's just print and print and print, so that uh, we can check if there's any more problems, and then we can handle the situation. You know, plan yeah. out, plan it out. And so we don't get delayed. <laughs> that's that's correct. <laughs> thank you, thank you for for giving us a briefer on the uh, 3D designing. We will call no on Jacob to talk to us about the 3D printing. Thank you. Hello. Good afternoon. Hi, Jacob. Hello. So we have here um, the actually there's a number of gadgets, and on our next slide is the 3D printer. Yes, that's Tell the Tell us more printer. about what you do for, for the diorama. 
Okay, so after Juan designs the the miniatures, we have to 3D print them. So actually in the lab laboratory, we have two kinds of 3D printers. We have the FDM, which is the more popular type of 3D printer, which uses the mm -hmm. filament, and the resin printer, which uh, or SLA printer, which uses resin. So after Juan gives me a design, I decide whether to print it on the filament or resin. So the ships, we print them using FDM, using the filament because they are big. And for the warriors and the villagers, we use the resin because it is more accurate. So you really had to have another team just doing the resin as compared to all those that are doing the, um, for, the for the filament? No, uh, I actually do all the 3D printing. Mm, okay. Right, right on the next slide here, um, you do have, I, I, I heard that it was 2,500 figures, but then there are some um, news that came out that it was 3,000 figures. What is your end figure now that you are one week before the launch? Well, uh, I think the confusion starts with us, us saying miniatures. Because when we say miniatures, we also add the, the trees, the houses, mm -hmm. and the ships. So that's why we came up with about, I think, 5,000 miniatures. That's a that's lot, the, no? uh, yeah. yeah, and and in that miniatures, the warriors and the villagers and the humans are actually just about, I think, at around 2,000. 1,500 to 2,000. One of the, um, I think, I find interesting is... What are your hurdles here? The challenges of 3D printing? Well, the, uh, for me, the biggest uh, challenge is the, actually the size of the miniatures, especially the warriors and the villagers, which are around three centimeters. So in resin printing, which we use for the warriors and villagers, every print is like an experiment because we'll never mm -hmm. know if it will print the design or details until it is done because it is submerged in resin. Then after mm -hmm. it is printed, we still need to check if the details are visible, like the clothes and the accessories. If not, we send it back to Sir Juan for remodeling until we get the acceptable product. So this is a cycle that actually happens for each design. So balik balik, no? Yeah. Who was the character that was very hard to um, create? Uh, I'd say... The main characters, uh, Lapu-Lapu and Magellan, because they have more details than the other warriors and villagers. Just because to share swords. with everyone, the Lapu-Lapu is in the upper left and then Magellan is the lower right, correct? Yes. Right. So the others are um, villagers in the upper two and then the lower, the lower right. Those are the are Spanish. Spaniards. Yeah, these are the Spaniards during the battle. So you also helped out with visual research or it was just basically um, Juan Miguel? Uh, all I, uh, for this project, I only do 3D printing and also some of the research and management. All right. A lot of work also. <laughs> but I'm pretty yeah. sure this will be worth it. Yeah. I hope. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for joining us. We will move on to a question first. It's a poll question. Um, we would like to know where you are residing, viewers. Are you in A, Iloilo, B, Metro Manila, C, others? And there is a reason for this. We will let you know later on. Please answer in the poll down on the Facebook link. Our next topic will be about miniature art. This is the one that's very detailed and you know, the devil is in the details. So we will bring in Emilio. Hi, Emilio. Hello, good afternoon. Hello. Good afternoon. Just to let everyone see first what you're doing, we will share a video of how the miniature art was done before we, we talk about it.
That's hi, Emilio. Hello. Okay. All right. So we will go into the um, the theme that you have, right? How would the process be once it is already um, created into three D printed already? Okay. Well, uh, once we get the the three D printing, uh, the miniature itself. Uh, well, uh, Jacob will know about that. Now we need to cure the, um, the filament or the resin, so it will it will be stronger. They're very prone to break the minimal touch. So we need to hold them and handle them very carefully. Uh, the first step of uh, my team is uh, dremeling the parts to clean the, the plastic. So it will show all the um, all the details of the design. After that, uh, we will prime it and then we will start painting it. Painting um, takes some time. So, so when you start, um, what's the term, curing it and then priming to painting, how long does it usually take up to the end, the finished product? Uh, well, since it, well, uh, since it goes out of the printer until the minute it's completely mm -hmm. done, it can take 24 hours. Wow. So your team must really be trained in good yeah. in painting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. So we're going to show photos of the team. Could you please um, talk about them a bit? Well, uh, Gretchen uh, is not only my assistant manager, she's my wife. She's been in charge of helping me teach the, our artists and also with communication. Uh, sometimes I don't know how to express myself very well in English and she will take it from there to, to explain the, the things to the guys. Uh, Ryan is my other assistant manager. Uh, he's been in the foundation and the restaurant for a long time already. And he's a guy with really amazing hands. Uh, he's so patient to make every tiny detail. And then he's the responsible of making the platform the decoration, the painting of the platform. Then we have all these guys here, Chester, jan Rod, Mike, uh, Joshua, Mary Joy, Rodel, and Salvador. That, uh, well, they came little by little to, to us. Only, that I recall, it's a long time ago, but if I remember good, only two of them started with us since the beginning. Okay. And, and then the others uh, came little by little. What training did you give them for for them to be able to, you know, learn the process? Okay, uh, the first step is uh, when they arrive uh, to us. The first thing I did is give them a blank miniature and a reference miniature, and I will give them a couple of hours to do what they can. Okay. After that, I will check, of course, and I will see what they are capable of, and then I will divide them into working groups depending on the skills, they will do base coating or detailing or tattoo. All right. So, so you do have experts in, for example, just painting the characters versus also someone who will be doing the scenery, who will be doing the trees yep. or the, that's, that's good. Co so just to, just to show to everyone, we have here photos of, um, First is the trees. Mm -hmm. Who who was in charge of all of these? The the details for the for the trees well, and what also trees to put in. Uh -huh. It also depends on their disponibility. They are all students, and sometimes they <laughs> they need to attend their classes or their exams. And well, sometimes. And then with this COVID, uh, some of them also got uh, in lockdown. So we need to adapt every day and work with what we have. Yes. So, but the main for the, for the trees uh, is uh, Rodel. Uh, you're not showing the, I don't, I don't really know the name of the, of the trees. Okay. I, I'm so it's sorry. Okay. I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't learn, but well, we're okay. making, we are making different uh, kind of, of trees. We are making, of course, uh, land trees, we are making palm trees, we are making mangroves, and also bushes. 
We need to I have an idea. I think that this, the bigger one is the Balete. And then you have the fire tree, which is endemic to the Philippines on the upper right. And the, that's a banana um, yep. plant <laughs> on the lower right. I read the description. <laughs> okay. So our next photo is also on the carabaos, the water buffaloes. This was what Arlie was mentioning a while ago. But ah. I'd like to put more focus on the next couple of photos, which is clearer. This one you have. Um, what kind of research? You really had to look for this, no? Someone, someone um, gave you the visual research or you also had to look into it? Well, uh, they will, of course, uh, share early most of the time. Uh, but mm -hmm. the whole team, actually, uh, we are uh, making research one for the others. Uh, we, in everything that all of us can help, we love to, to help the other parts of the project because we all want it to succeed, of course. Mm -hmm. So after different uh, researches, we will work on it. And actually, well, you see the, the Carabao? Yes. Well, you can, you can see that in, in the province, you can see that all the time. Still, still nowadays, I care about carrying the, the bamboo. Yes. <laughs> oh, we that's also not, have not many research for that. <laughs> the we also have um, nipa hats that were created. So, I, I guess you do not have, you do not have similar nipa hats. They're all different, no? Mm, yeah, uh, all of them are created. Uh, are hand handmade. We are not printing them. Uh, some of them we use uh, vinyl, and then we use different natural covers to make the the real looking. And the others we have uh, Kian and Chester making with a three D pen. It's like mm -hmm. drawing in the air. So they will make the base structure, and then the rest of the team will cover it with uh, with leaves or with. Uh, different kind of vegetable fibers. Okay. We have a question here from um, someone from Vibal, from Michael De Jesus. How did you select your artists considering the intricacy of the project, especially with your okay. team? Yeah. Hello, Michael. Uh, well, it's, it's simple. Okay. Uh, first thing that I will look at is that they are willing to learn. Uh, mm -hmm. All of them are artists. They are really good on, on arts, but uh, painting a wall or painting a canvas is totally different from painting this size miniature. So they need to be open. They need to be hardworking. And well, they need to have to pass the, the try. The skill test. Yeah. Right. He also asked, what are the general sizes of the miniature? I, I heard a while ago that it was one is to fifty, right? So everything yes. is one is to fifty. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, our next photos are on the characters already, and just to share how intricate this is, it's um, three centimeters tall. So you have the in proportion, you have the one peso coin there. Yeah. But I'd like to go back to this this um, slide. So you have Lapu-Lapu seated, Magellan in action, trying to put out his um, sword. And you also have Raha Humabon that is here. Um, in, in, terms of, in terms of research, no, naaliw ako dito kay Raha Humabon is mentioned on the bulky side because that was what he was really known for. Um, this really also had a lot of research for, for each of the characters. Correct. Uh, we received some guides from the National Historical Commission, especially on the clothes and the tattoos, because depending oh, okay. on the zone, depending on the zone of the Philippines, uh, 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 clothes and tattoos were totally different. Mm -mm. So it it happens uh, a lot that well, uh, our artists maybe researched made tattoos and then we realized that that is not the correct tattoo of of Visayas. Okay. So we needed to repaint everything and start all over again. So that means if we get to go and see it, 
we really have to look at tattoos to be able to appreciate it. Because the tattoos were really researched also. Yeah. I'd also like to share, you have um, the ships. Caracuas, you have Bangka. And how many in total do you have? Water vessels. Uh, I'm not sure because, uh, well, on the tryouts in the platform, we started with, uh, I think it was 30. And then we saw that it doesn't cover too many uh, water. So we decided to make more. I think we are now on 40 or 42. And you still plan to make more? Uh, maybe a couple more. A couple okay. of them more. All right. <laughs> we have time. So the photos here show that it was also placed in real water, right? Yep. How much water was placed to fill in the 50 square meter? Around 4,000 liters. Wow. So when you transfer it, you have to be putting the water all over again. Yep. Can you give us more information about um, the one with the really long caracua? We have uh, this this one. Uh, well, uh, all the caracuas are based on on uh, historical drawings and mm. and chronicles. So we tried to make it as as good as possible. Uh, there are two kinds. We made two or three kinds of different caracoas. Uh, we reserved the big ones for the for the datus and the small ones for for just warriors. But for this, was, you have sorry for this, you have more than fifteen people in the yeah. in the vessel, right? Yeah. The, they needed uh, they needed the rowers, of course. Yeah. So uh, all of them will when once you see it in the in the diorama, you will see that all of them has uh, rowers on the sides. All of all of all of our caracuas are full of people. Great. One last question: If we go see the diorama, how do we see which is the focal point? Because I think for different parts like we could see Lapu Lapu and then we could see the the Victoria for us to be able to appreciate it more where should we put our focus first and then um, appreciate it as a whole as in my opinion I think you should first focus at a whole thing okay, okay. as the whole as the whole map then you will see that there are uh, four yeah, I will say four different parts, four different actions. That is the, the naval zone, all the boats. Mm -hmm. Then uh, the battle action with the, the battle between the Spaniards and Lapu Lapu's men. You will see Lapu Lapu's zone, of course, uh, with him checking checking out all the, all the beach. Okay. And then the villagers. Some Spaniards will be burning houses and the villagers will be running out of, of the houses to, to save their lives. Oh, okay. That's <laughs> very well thought of. So I'm pretty sure um, if we get in Binondo, if we get to have the time to fly to Iloilo, we will be able to see it. Thank you. Thank you for sharing I would like with to us. Yes. I would like to add uh, that, well, uh, in the products that we are using for the, we used a lot of different products, a lot of different uh, paints, but uh, we discovered that there is one brand that, uh, well, I will say uh, proudly Filipino made, it's local, that uh, surpassed all our expectations at the time of, of painting. And it made our life easier because uh, you'll see it, there are different kinds of paints and then the viscosity, uh, everything will count at the time of painting, especially when the smaller it is or the porosity of the plastics. So yeah, I'm, I'm saying this because there is, there are, I know there are a lot of miniature enthusiasts and some of the previous yes. group and this may help them to to work with their with their own projects that I will strongly recommend uh, to try Arcom. Most of them will know it already because 
I didn't know it before I came to the Philippines and it's an amazing paint. The quality is, is top, the quality. Just to uh, reiterate that it's, this is the Armored Komodo Heavy Industries, right? Yep, correct. And this can be found online? Uh, yes, they they are, on, I think they're on Facebook and then they sell in other kind of uh, online stores in the, the Philippines. That's This will be very helpful for those who are watching from Miniature Enthusiasts Philippines. And that's why I wanted to say it because yeah. it's something that, that it helps at the time of, of, of buying and thinking what product to use. It's something important to, to, to think about. Thank you, Emilio, for sharing with us all those tips and um, we will make sure to be able to appreciate the diorama more if we look at it from a very uh, a wider perspective first before looking into each of the highlights. We will call back Sir Arlie, the project manager of the diorama. Hi, Sir Arlie. We have a question from someone, Ferdinand Pagao, at Chinatown Museum page. Do you intend to have the diorama tour around the country? We'd love to. <laughs> We'd love to. Uh, first, we'll, we'll show this for 100 days here, but the celebration of the King Centennial will go on until next year. Uh, so mm -hmm. we'd love this to, uh, to share because one of the, one of the deeper um, goals of this diorama is for us to, number one, learn. Learn the details of the past 500 years. Unlearn, meaning we correct whatever... Yeah errors that were taught us about history, did Lapu-Lapu really kill Magellan? Maybe not because he was 70 years old. You'll see this in the diorama. Where was he? Possibly. This was also Dr. Hirona's uh, point of view. Possibly he was directing the fight. No? Uh, and so many other, other things that's worth discussing. So learn, unlearn the things that need to be unlearned and relearn so that whatever we have relearned may help us Yes. Also, uh, in our, what we call as the informed decision-making for our own future in this generation. So we'd love to share this to everybody after the 100, 100 days uh, display at uh, Sulu Garden. That's right. Um, also, for those who are planning to go, it would be also good to have a background and the research of Dr. Herona, which is we are sharing with you the website, sulugardenfoundation.org. Dr. Herona's research is there. And mm -hmm. I myself, personally, I had to relearn a lot of things that I thought <laughs> was, was correct. For example, I didn't know Lapu-Lapu was 70 years old. So you have a lot of those misconceptions that have been in our heads through the years. and But because of the research, we know now which are facts and which are myths, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, Sir Arlie, just to share, our viewers from Iloilo are quite very few, but do please invite them. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, we, 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 we expect that this will snowball. We've been doing this as silently mm -hmm. as possible. But you discovered us. Thank you very much for partnering with us. Mega World, thank you very much for partnering with us. With our partnership, snowball ito. Uh, <laughs> of course, we have to we have to control the crowd as they they come along. Uh, locally in Miyagao, this has snowballed already, and they want they want to rush in. Sabi namin, we will observe pandemic uh, protocols. No? Uh, Definitely. We, by batches, mm -hmm. we observe the protocols. But I know for 100 days, there will be a lot of people uh, who will be coming here and look for themselves. So, sa mga Ilonggos, kahit, uh, uh, let me speak in Ilonggo, uh, due time man kita, pero I know, magkanto ka mo dere, you will bring along and return and bring along uh, your friends. No? And this is also for those who can, who can drop by. Um, please, as much as possible, don't just um, I'm pretty sure of this because in some in some of our projects, uh, selfie selfie lang. But I know you will discuss details which will open your mind 
as far as historical facts are concerned. You will learn. You will unlearn and you will relearn. Now, come here, Sasulu Garden. We'll be happy to accommodate you. Thank you, Sir Arlie. All right. That is the end of our discussion. And at the same time, we would like to invite everyone. We cannot, unfortunately, we cannot share with you the bigger scale of the diorama because the launch for this will still be on March 27. In the meantime, we will be posting this talk in Museums Matter in YouTube. Please subscribe. This talk was also made possible by Sulu Garden Foundation. Follow them to find out if they will have, after the 100 days, move on to a different um, part, of, part of the Philippines. So definitely, if they plan to carry it, it's going to be another, um, the mobility of the structure will be something to hurdle. Sulu Garden Foundation on Facebook. Chinatown Museum, we also have a Facebook page for those who are watching. Thank you for following us. For those who haven't yet, please do. And Iloilo Museum of Contemporary, Contemporary Art, um, our Facebook page is named Ilo Moka. And lastly, thank you also to Vibal Group. Thanks for joining us. Happy weekend, everyone.